Welcome to Highline XL 2013 class number nine. Hey, we are in week three, and if you want to download this week three workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, I'm on the topic sheet, and here are our exciting topics for this week three. We're going to start off by talking about define names and aggregate functions. So I'm going to come over to the sheet DN. Now I have some notes up at the top. You can read that later or hit pause there. We want to talk about the defined name feature and aggregate functions. Now here we have a data set. We have date, invoice number, and revenue. Now last week we talked about all sorts of cell references including table uh, references or structured references or table formula nomenclature. Hey, that option, the table feature is awesome because it has expandable ranges. However, if you have a static table like this and you're going to use the same column of data over and over, we can simply give this column of data a name, a defined name, and then instead of using the cell references in our formula, we'll use that defined name. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Highlight and right up in the formula bar here this is the name box you can see when I hover my cursor it says name box you click and because it's highlighted if I type a name with no spaces it and hit enter it will officially name that range alright so I type revenue now when I hit enter that now has an official name if I click somewhere I can come up to the drop down and there's lots of names in this because all of the answers are here but notice there is my revenue. If I select from my drop down, it instantly highlights it. We highlighted a range. You could certainly highlight a range and give a single cell a name also. Now it's important to know how to edit these and delete these. If we go up to the formulas ribbon, ah, define names group. Here's the name manager. If you ever want to use it in a formula, you could use that, although I'm going to show you a couple different ways. And there's the create from a selection. We'll see how to use that in just a moment also. But now, name manager. Here is our complete list of names. You can expand and move. If you find a name like our revenue and you want to edit it, you click the edit button and then you can change the range. If it did change, right now it's static. It's just looking at a range C17 to C33. Notice it's absolute by default. Everything we learned about cell references last week, mixed cell references relative, could be applied in this refers to text box. So you could edit it and change it. All right, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to delete that. And now if we go over here, it's not there anymore, and it's not in our list over here anymore. Now, here's a great trick. You know, oftentimes what happens? There's field names at the top. So instead of highlighting and going up and typing, if your field names at the top simply highlight, boom, field name at the top, exactly the range I want with that field name. And we can use the keyboard, or you can go to Formulas, Create from Selection. Control Shift F3, Control Shift F3, and instantly it asks, hey, where do you want uh, your name to come from? The top row. If you have more than one column highlighted, oftentimes it wants, wants to name from the left also. You can uncheck that if you don't want to name from the left. Here, revenue is going to be that given to that column right there. Click OK. Now I can check. Boom, revenue. And if I go up to the name manager, I will find that it is there also. All right, so now count. What does count do? It counts numbers. So I can type count tab. Now there's a couple ways we can get to our defined names. I don't think I've ever gone, I don't even know if this works, use in formula. Oh, there's our name. So we could apply it that way. Uh, the only advantage to that is if you completely forget every other way, certainly knowing where the define names group in the formulas ribbon tab is is, is uh, useful. Ah, but we can just type, hey, this one was easy, revenue. Now, notice the drop down. That little f of x means function. The dog tag means that's a name. I can either double click. I could arrow down. Once I highlight it in blue, I can hit tab. 
All right, so count revenue, boom. Now count a, this is sort of a conceptual question because count a counts not empty cells. Now we talked about this before, this function is often used if you have text in a column. Now I'm going to count because it will count non empty cells here. What happens if I just highlight the range? Boom, the define name is put in. So that define name, now anytime you use that it is going to be put in. Now you could type out the cell reference C17 to C33, but if you highlight it, boom, that's pretty polite. It says, hey, that's the revenue. Alt equals. Another way to get to your list of names is to use the F3. F3 key pastes a name. And this will work in many different places, charts and other locations where you might want to use a name. I use it when I can't remember what the name of the, na uh, the, name of the defined name is. So I'm going to double click and sure enough revenue is put in. Equals min rev tab enter equals max rev tab enter. So if you're using that defined name over and over, you get the hang of it. Now notice I'm also using tab twice here. I'm going to select tab to select the function, boom, and then rev tab to select the defined name. I'm not going to type that close parentheses because I know Excel will be polite and put it in. So instantly I've done a couple things. I wanted to use this column over and over so instead of highlighting I used a defined name and eventually if you get the hang of it you can really type out a bunch of functions quickly that way. Hey, wait a second. I should have named both of these columns at the same time because I'm going to use this invoice number here. Now let's go up to the name manager. I'm going to use the keyboard control F3. That gets to name manager. We could have gone to the ribbon. I'm going to delete revenue because I do want to do two things. I want to show you uh, what happens if you delete it and then I'll show you a more efficient way to name multiple columns. So I'm going to click the delete key and then click OK. Immediately I see a name error. That error says there is text in our formula that is not a function name or a define name. It just doesn't know what that is. Now interestingly enough, count, if we run formula evaluator, alt M V and click evaluate or enter, you can see it converts to a name error and then count, since it's programmed to count numbers, it sees zero. It counts zero numbers there. The count of, if we do the same thing, alt M V, enter, you can see it sees that a name error. It says, hey, that's not empty, and so it gives us a count of one. These ones just flat out say, hey, um, sh they show the name error right in the cell. All right, so I want to come over here and I want to name this column invoice number and this column revenue. Wow, so that means if I had 30 columns and I wanted to give them all a defined name, highlight the field name, the data below, control shift F3, there we go, click OK. Instantly these update. I could check over here. I have an invoice number. Ha ha, but wait a second, remember we said no spaces. So that underscore, and if I control F3 and come down, you can expand the columns here, edit. So that invoice number with a space, control shift F3 to create names from selection, it's polite. It'll put an underscore in because you can't have spaces. Sometimes people try to type that out with a space. It won't work. You've got to use the underscore. So click Escape. Here I want to uh, total up the invoices uh, total. So we have multiple occurrences of invoices here. right? So there's uh, 67002, 67002, and I need to add these are line items from a transactional data set, and so we need to add the totals for this invoice. I'm going to use some if or ifs, and I'm going to use the S because I think the screen tip is more polite. Hey, look, revenue, oh yeah, that will put it in like this. Now let's try criteria range is going to be invoice, so I type INV tab. 
if you were to type it out, be sure to put that underscore, comma, and then the criteria, one cell to my left, close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. So using define names in some ifs. Okay, so we talked about define names and we talked about some aggregate functions. Now one last topic for this video, I'm actually going to come and delete this, that shouldn't have been there. Um, we have a column with numbers and errors. Now sometimes we can deal with the errors with the if function or the if error or something like that, but other times you want that error there. That error here, it's doing a lookup to this table here and we'll see how to do lookup next week. And the n error means it's not available and we want it there. So what do we do if we want to come to the bottom and alt equals and add up this whole column here? Well, just like earlier with some functions, the error just flat out is going to override the sum calculation. So there's a new function that came in 2010, so Excel 2010, 13, or anything after 2010, there's something called the aggregate function. The aggregate function will do all of these different type of calculations, and there's a great options argument where you say, hey, ignore errors. So whereas the sum function won't work, we can use aggregate. Now the aggregate screen tip and drop downs are very polite. It first asks for the function number and actually I'm going to drag this up here. Uh, the, the top one with this array argument uh, that is for array formulas. We'll talk about array formulas later in this class. And some functions, index is another example of functions, have two different options. But this one right here is the one we want. Just tell it which function, then we give it the option, and then we give it reference. That means it's like a cell reference. So the function, wow, I can choose between all these. Now 1 to 13, you can use the reference argument, the second screen tip option. 14 and above are for array calculations, and we'll mention this aggregate function later, but totally beautiful. Uh, for years, people have been wishing they had a function like this a week so that we could ignore errors. I'm just going to select number 9, comma, and then for options, I'm going to come down, and there's a bunch of things you can do with subtotal and stuff like that, but we're not. The absolute coolest option here is ignore errors. Number 6. And then comma, we simply for reference highlight. And that will do it. And because the aggregate can do lots of different calculations, it's a great way to ignore errors. All right, uh, this video we talked about define names, aggregate functions, and even the aggregate function to ignore errors. Next video, we'll talk all about making calculations with multiple criteria. All right, see you next video.